And there's some research in terms of diabetes. Uh, Peter Atta, maybe his last name? Atta, yeah, yeah. Atta, okay. And he talks about like how we've gotten it wrong that the weight, you know, the obesity doesn't create the chronic disease or the, the diabetes that, you know, it, that the weight can be an outcome of diabetes. So maybe we have, so, I mean, what I love about this is being open to that. We mm -hmm. can't make assumptions based on the science that we have just now. And that's mm -hmm. true of the stuff that I'm talking about too. Um, although it's been around since Marcus Aurelius, you know, like philosopher a long time ago, mm -hmm. so they're consistent. So anyway, I don't know, it's so big. And I have so many places to go in my head. Is there one piece? It. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess, yes. I guess if we're talking about weight management or whatever, like ill health, what is it about either the outcome of the behaviors you're choosing? So let's say weight. I don't, I don't want it to be minimized to like obesity is the problem or whatever. Okay. So like, but I'll just use weight management. Let's say excess weight. What is it about having excess weight that is working for someone that is meeting their needs? And again, we can list the needs. Or what is it about the behaviors that are meeting the needs? Now, let's call these process is behavior and outcome is the weight. Okay, so like whatever the outcome is of your behaviors and whatever, you know, the behaviors themselves is the process, how you're getting there. So one or both of these things is meeting a need. Okay, so the needs in, in choice theory, and there's, there's several theories under the IP umbrella on internal control psychology, there's lots of theories that sort of talk about this concept of we have an internal drive to behave that are, that are used to meet needs that we we're born with. Okay, so there's lots of different theories. I can think of self-determination theory is one other one that's used a lot in, in fitness. But choice theory is the one that I just happen to love a lot because I find it very comprehensive and there's lots of pieces to it that really work in fitness, um, other realms too. So in choice theory, the needs are uh, survival, which I think most people can get with. I mean, that's right out of Maslow's. Most people can get mm -hmm. Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, fun, and I'll tell you a little bit about that one later. Uh, freedom, which I mentioned a bit earlier. Love and belonging. And I'm gonna call it empowerment because I don't wanna confuse people. He calls it power, like the people in choice theory call it power, but mm -hmm. empowerment is, is more what we're talking about. It's more a sense of mastery or competence or an, within an internal empowerment as opposed to trying to power over people. Yeah. We got that wrong. That's the mm -hmm. problem. We got it wrong. <laughs> and so we start to try to power over people. But the whole idea is any behaviors we do is designed to meet one or more of those basic needs. We all have the same basic needs and doesn't mean that the only, those aren't the only five needs. It depends who you talk to, but we are all born with basic needs and we're driven to try to meet them. So the behaviors we choose are designed to get us what we want out of those behaviors and meet those needs, okay? Or likewise, sometimes the outcome is designed to get us what we want. So in fitness context, you can think of um, the difference between training for uh, Ironman and completing an Ironman, okay? So those are two different things. You get a certain, you meet certain needs by training and you meet certain needs by accomplishing or completing, okay? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to weight management, yeah. <laughs> so there's like all the behaviors we're doing that aren't decreasing weight meet our needs to some extent. In some way, yeah. Yeah, and in some ways, and I can think of some um, some instances of trauma where I've talked to uh, people who have had traumatic events in their life, and that they have, or or I mean, you don't you don't need to talk to people. Many of those programs, like those weight loss programs, where the coach is yelling at the, the client, and they lose a lot of weight. What comes out of those conversations is immense trauma or some kind of thing that they're hiding in their life, a secret identity or whatever it is, right? Some burdening thing where the weight, the physical weight has helped them to, to not have to deal with that in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So honestly, like all of this being said, what it comes down to is, this is such a pivotal thing for me when I heard it was you never has, you never ever have to ask why a person is doing something, no matter how bizarre, no matter like, no matter how much you're thinking, what, on, why would they do that? No matter how much you think that or believe that, that they're doing the wrong thing, it is meeting one or more of their basic needs. You already know that. You just got yeah. to figure out which ones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what? And, and sometimes 
you you maybe need to figure it out as the coach or you need you you don't need anything like it you can do whatever you want but what's helpful is to ask questions to support the client to figure out what that is because sometimes the client themselves has no idea and that's why they feel stuck 